Hey, it's Boots McGillicuddy. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Oh Baby, I Like It Raw, Living and Vegan. Um, I haven't posted anything in a while, no new videos. Uh, if you don't follow my blog already, with the exception of Taco Tuesdays, then you should. And um, for those of you who have, then you've seen that I posted a couple things there, somewhat filling in the blanks. Our youngest daughter um, was born with some pretty serious kidney issues. And the children's hospital that treats her is three hours away. She's had a couple of recent surgeries. She's had several in her short little life. But we have a feeling that this may be her last and that she may be on the road to, um, to healing. And we're very, very excited and feeling very positive about that. But it has kept us away from home and um, staying with relatives a couple hours away from here. Now, we weren't prepared. We thought, okay, during that time, we'll just, you know, eat fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. We'll go to the grocery store every few days. Um, we didn't pack up our tools. We didn't pack up our blender, our dehydrator, our food processor. We now know if we're gone for that length of time, we will. The first family outing to a restaurant, um, we caved. And <laughs> it's amazing because when you start eating a raw vegan um, lifestyle. The food is so clean, the food is so pure, your body becomes detoxified, and um, your palate becomes cleansed. And we went to a restaurant chain. It was extremely clear that they don't really have cooks working there. They have people that defrost and deep fry pre-made, pre-packaged food that gets trucked into them or something, we're assuming, by the way it tasted. Let's just say I was not feeling good in the neighborhood that night. By the time the check came, my body was rejecting this food, and um, we had to break several traffic laws to get me home to a bathroom in time. It was horrible. Uh, we're so thankful to be home and to be eating delicious things. I think long term, the key to being successful at something is to um, create variety and to try new things but when you're transitioning from such an extreme I think that maybe some familiar tastes are key they have been for us so um, you know sure try all the things you know like the the meat flavored things or the raw fried beans that are made from nuts but Maybe sometimes just enjoy nuts as nuts because it's familiar and it can be com comforting. Um, key transition foods for us are the uh, chocolate banana, banana shake. It's made from raw cacao, um, frozen bananas. Frozen bananas are key because it gives it a creamy, thick taste um, and almond milk. Find a great salad dressing recipe. Um, because sometimes just a simple salad with vegetables and things that aren't too exotic that you are familiar with can be super satisfying and help during a time where you need a comfort familiar food. We found a great rest dehydrator recipe for a corn chip um, and eat it with a fresh salsa or guacamole and it's amazing. These are things that have been staples for us during this time. Um, other things that help during the transition time. Inspiration. Um, look up Philip McCluck. Dang it, I can't speak. I'm my mother suddenly. Philip McCluck. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, I'll, I'll post his name on here so you can see it. Thank God he will never look at this video. Sorry for just slaughtering your name. Not that he would care because he seems like the sweetest person on the planet. Anyway, he lost a ridiculous amount of weight with this lifestyle. He is extremely supportive to the people that follow him through his videos. I know you can subscribe to his YouTube videos and he has a blog. Um, check it out. Also, I love, love, love um, the Renegade Health Show. It's a husband and wife who live this lifestyle. They do a lot of um, video recipes, and it helped me so much because they break it down. They, you know, they dumb it down for people that 
have not been living this way their whole life. All of a sudden I'm seeing ingredients like ground golden flaxseed and ground almond meal and I'm going to the store and I don't see ground almond meal or ground flaxseed. When they're describing their recipes, they describe how to prepare those things yourself. For instance, you don't just buy those things, you put flaxseed in a coffee grinder and you make it yourself in seconds. Easy peasy. Same thing with almonds or any other kind of nut that a recipe calls for ground. And they explain those things to you. I love them. They're fun to watch. They're super positive. There's another guy. I should have looked up his name ahead of time. If you've started watching anything online, um, documentaries, anything having to do with vegan raw living, you'll see him. Curly hair. I feel like he's sort of a well-respected guru type person. To me, he is at the optimal level of this diet. He's the expert, but again, he uses a language that I can understand. He doesn't talk to me as if I already know all these things. Um, I gotta figure out his name. Oh my word, I'm not prepared. Um, Curly-headed guy, come on. If you, if you've seen the documentary uh, from the Super Size Me guy, ew, if you haven't watch it, um, basically they take a group of people with uh, type one, type two diabetes, and they cure it. They basically reverse diabetes with the vegan raw food diet. All these people are off their meds, including someone with type one diabetes. Awesome. Also, there's another documentary out there. In one of my earlier episodes, I made the comment that I don't want to turn into some hippie weirdo. I don't want to dance in the forest with a wooden staff. And, okay. Gingy and Nutman. They made this uh, documentary themselves, so it's pretty poorly produced. Um, they're pretty zen, so it's very slow-mo. Um, but they're awesome. And if you have children and are thinking about this lifestyle for your kids, these people have raised their children raw vegan, so you get a lot of insight on that. Gingy and Nutman. I want to say their documentary is called Breaking Through. I will get that information for you. Um, but anyway, at one point, like two seconds after having a, her like hundredth kid, Gingy's out in the forest dancing with this wooden staff with like her shirt all like tied up and her, her abdomen showing and padow, like, wow, amazing. Um, yeah, if I look like that, uh, try to keep me away from dancing with my wooden staff in the forest. So I apologize. I'm eating my words. Gingy, Nutman, you go. They're beautiful, beautiful people. Oh, they're a lot. I mean, Nutman's like 84 years old and Gingy's like pushing 40 and they look way younger than me. I mean, amazing. Um, anyway, so inspiration, familiar comfort foods, educating yourself, finding sources that are talking at a level that you can understand. I think these are key. I, oh, being prepared, having the right tools, building up your recipes, trying new things. This is all. Namaste. Just kidding, I'm not really there yet. I'm not in a namaste level. Anyway, I need to go to bed. <laughs> all right, love you guys.